Doctor, can you explain what are the tests has to be done to identify there is a blood disorder or any other special test has to be done uh, to identify blood disorder as well as blood cancers. Blood disorders as such, so one common test that uh, is done by all hematologists and it's actually a very simple basic test which is uh, done by physicians is what is called a complete blood count or a CBC. Um, a complete blood count is like a window into your blood system and uh, mainly comprises of hemoglobin, WBC or total count and platelet count. And if all of these are normal, it's very very less likely that you have a major blood disorder but if there is changes or variations in any of these parameters on your complete blood count then it requires a specialist attention. So that is a very simple test and that is one of the tests we start off with as hematologists to see if a patient has any type of a blood disorder. If we are to diagnose particular types of blood cancer then there is a small list of uh, tests that we get. We check the blood under the microscope that is called a peripheral smear. In addition to a complete blood count we look at what is called peripheral smear where we look at the blood under the microscope. Uh, we are looking for any abnormal cells. We are looking for reasons why the hemoglobin has come down. We are looking for reasons why the platelet counts have come down. If we are talking about diagnosing blood cancer exact type and uh, how severe it is, then we do another small test which is usually a, an OPD procedure unless it is done for very young infants or children in which case they need to be taken to the OT and given sedation or anesthesia. For young adults and for older individuals, we usually do it under local anesthesia. This procedure is called bone marrow aspiration biopsy. Just like we take blood from our veins to perform various tests to see what is going on with that blood. Bone marrow aspiration biopsy is a procedure where we take a thin needle and after giving local anesthesia and cleaning the surface, we put the needle into our hip bone and take a sample to find out what exact type of cancer it is or what exact type of bone marrow condition is going on. So almost all hematologists to diagnose the type of you know either myeloma or leukemia Sometimes in lymphomas, we do a bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. Apart from this, um, especially for myelomas and lymphomas, we do another whole body scan. It is called PET-CT, where we look at which all lymph nodes are involved. If it's a lymphoma, then which are all the lymph nodes that are involved. If it is a myeloma, then uh, which all bones has it invaded? Is it affecting any other organs uh, or any other you know, important vital organs in the body? So we do a PET CT scan or a PET CT to check the patient's organ functions, that is to check liver function, kidney function. We also check the bleeding and clotting if it is proper. We check clotting factors. Uh, we do a test called thromboelastogram or Tag to see if the patient is at risk of bleeding. There is another various list of uh, conditions, uh, tests, depending on which condition we are suspecting. But mainly for blood cancers, these are the tests we do. So that means for every uh, cancer testing, CBC or the complete blood count is the basic test. If you find the variation, then the hematologist will recommend other tests. Correct? Correct. Yes. Thank you. Doctor, can you explain what is pediatric cancer? What are the cancer can kids will get and why it will get? Pediatric cancers, um, fortunately, are rare. They are not very common, but there are a variety of pediatric cancers and uh, there are a, you know, there are a few reasons why pediatric cancers happen. If I have to talk about what is the most common pediatric cancer, uh, that is pediatric brain tumors or uh, you know, tumors in the brain or brain cancer. That is one of the most common pediatric cancer or pediatric tumor. Uh, apart from that, or uh, next to that, in second place will be pediatric blood cancers or leukemias. So just like adults get leukemias or blood cancer, children also can get blood cancer, which is leukemia. After that comes lymphoma, just like in adults, it's a cancer of the lymph nodes, but it's also a type of blood cancer. Apart from this, children can have uh, cancers involving various parts of the body. One thing that differentiates cancer in children versus cancer in adults is a lot of cancer in adults is related to their lifestyle. So smokers can get lung cancer, people who drink alcohol can get liver cancer, people who have eaten a a lot of spicy foods or have exposed their gastric lining to uh, you know smoked foods you can get stomach cancer colon cancer these things are almost non-existent in children so children never get lung cancer uh, stomach cancer is unheard of in children uh, liver cancer can happen but it's more related to genetic uh, causes than lifestyle causes so other cancers in children like bone tumors are more common in children um, we have something called Wilms tumor or kidney cancer that hardly ever happens in adults but is quite common in children. There is something called neuroblastoma, which is a tumor that involves the nerves inside our, inside our body. That is also more common in children. Uh, as I mentioned, liver cancer. There can also be what we call rhabdomyosarcoma, which is uh, tumors that start from the muscles in the body, uh, but they can 
happen in adults as well. There is one other tumor that is also more specific to kids called retinoblastoma. It is a cancer that comes from the eyes, specifically from the eyeball, and is pretty much found only in children and uh, hardly ever found in adults. And it can start as in as young a baby as just a newborn infant. It can also be born with retinoblastoma. So these are the specific types of pediatric. Uh, thank you, doctor. So, what is the chances of curing cancer in kids? It's more than adults. Yes, that's a very good question. So, there is a little bit of a misconception in the society that uh, once children get cancer, it is almost impossible to cure them because oh, how will you give them chemotherapy? Chemotherapy is something so serious, so severe that children will not be able to tolerate it. They will have so many side effects that they will die from the treatment alone. Forget about the cancer. So, these are all the misconceptions that come with pediatric cancer. Unfortunately, fortunately actually most of those myths or misconceptions are wrong as in uh, children can actually tolerate pretty high doses of chemotherapy that is required to kill the tumor but still not damage their tissues because all their tissues are still fresh children don't have diabetes children don't have you know, hypertension they don't have liver disease they are not you know, born with damaged kidneys so most of their organ functions are still preserved and healthy and young and they are able to tolerate doses at much higher doses or chemotherapy at much higher doses compared to adults because of which the cure rate or the cure chances um, of pediatric cancer is much higher compared to adults especially if we look about pediatric leukemias then the, tu- the cure rates of something called BALL or uh, standard risk or low risk acute le- B cell leukemia is as good as 90 so if you're talking about 90% cure rate in a pediatric, uh, in, a, in a cancer, I think that is excellent. Um, of course, all cancers don't come with such good cure rates, but specific cancers that come with very good cure rates in children are pediatric leukemias. Pediatric lymphomas are also very, very curable. Brain tumors, some type of brain tumors, yes, they require surgery and radiation and chemotherapy, but are also very curable and risk of recurrence is very low. Wilms tumor, that is the cancer of the kidneys, if it is in stage 1 or stage 2, is also very curable cancer. So although cancer in children is a very scary idea or or a a very scary diagnosis, uh, the solace is in the fact that if treated by the right specialist, picked up at the right time and treated in the right way, then the cure rates are much better than adults. Thank you, doctor. I know it's a busy day, but uh, thanks for, uh, you know, giving the information late in the night. Thank you very much. Thank you.